Los comentarios vertidos en este medio de comunicación son de exclusiva responsabilidad de quienes las emiten y no representan necesariamente el pensamiento ni la línea de guanatosfm.net. Hey everyone, good afternoon. Um, welcome to Community Voice Radio again. <clears throat> I want to thank firstly all those that tune in every week and um, also encourage you if you desire to um, uh, write us at, um, at the uh, network, uh, Guanatos FM, it's on Facebook. Uh, and while we are broadcasting, you can write your comments or you can uh, specifically write to my uh, WhatsApp, which is uh, phone number 33-2055-8808, 33 meaning that is in Guadalajara. Uh, so if you're residents of this immediate area or of Mexico, just dialing 33-2055-8808. You can write to me on um, on WhatsApp, and any additional information can be uh, passed on to you. I'd like to introduce on this day, a very special day, actually, uh, the 25th of July, uh, Clay Johnson. Clay Johnson is a fellow member of the American Legion here in Guadalajara. Enrique um, Alvarez de Castillo, if I'm not mistaken, he was the former governor of Jalisco. And um, he... Um, Mr. Clayton is the vice commander. And uh, we, we will be presenting today information for those veterans out there that wish to contact us and become members uh, to please listen to our program. Uh, Clay, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for appearing. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate that you're here because um, what we represent and what we stand for is very important. And there are few people right here in this community that perhaps know we exist, but don't know where we are. And that's, a, that's an issue. Additionally, uh, Clay had been involved with the Legion here for many, many years. Actually, when I came in 2007, when I first arrived, he was already a member of post number three. So you know he's been around for a while and he can fill you in. And if you have any questions, uh, he'll be making himself available for that. All those comments. Let me straighten my own look like a wise guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> yeah, I, I um, became a member of Post 3 in August of 1998. Whoa. Um, <laughs> I, I flew into Guadalajara, and uh, I was in a hotel downtown, kind of a cheap hotel downtown, and... Uh, I picked up a little flyer in English that was laying around. Right. It had several advertisements in it, and there was an advertisement for the American Legion, Post <laughs> 3. And I called the number, and how in the world I understood the, the cook, uh, a guy that worked for the Legion a long time, he answered the phone and spoke to me in Spanish. I don't know how, <laughs> I, how, how I got it, but he got over to me that there was a picnic in the Legion the next day, okay. and, for, and it would be a good day for me to come. <laughs> so I went the next day to that picnic and became a became a, a member. member of Post 3. That was uh, Las Fuentes, if I'm not mistaken. In Las Fuentes. What a beautiful place, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And since you've been involved, uh, I know that when uh, we no longer have Post 3, here in Guadalajara, you became a member, an active member of Post 7? 
in no, Chapala? No, I never oh. did become a member oh, okay. of Post 7. I, I visited Post 7 a lot. Uh, we went over to meetings and so forth. We had several functions with Post 7. Oh, okay. But um, uh, I never became a member oh, of Post okay. 7. Yeah. No, I remember when I returned from Mexico City, I became a member once we didn't have the post any longer. But now we're uh, uh, we're about to change all that because the efforts of, of Clay and other members like the commander, Ed, and John and David, they all are contributing um, to uh, starting over, uh, I guess is the term we would use, so we can uh, so we can have uh, additional members. And I know that on Facebook, if I'm not mistaken, there's something like 78 veterans, according to the to the numbers they are on the Facebook page, uh, of, of veterans that are living, residing here in Guadalajara. And we're reaching out to those people. Hopefully, uh, you guys can join us. We have a lot of things to do, and we have a lot of uh, uh, important projects, like the charities and such, right? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, we, we just uh, uh, went to... Um, had a fantastic event. We just went to the 257th birthday anniversary of the Marines. The Marines that uh, protect the U.S. consulate had a birthday party. We um, were invited. We were invited to that birthday party. Uh, it was a lot of fun. A formal dress party. Um, we've had. Uh, we had a Memorial Day ceremony um, uh, and a national monument here in Mexico, the Berlin Cemetery, right. Panteon de Berlin Cemetery, a uh, national monument in Mexico. Well, it was very successful and a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, we plan uh, a lot of events. Uh, uh, we'd, we'd like to have picnics. Um, Fourth of July celebrations. Fourth of July, right. things like that. Uh, actually, fundraisers. Exactly. To uh, uh, we used to uh, we used to help the community a lot. We used to raise money and uh, do things like um, we had posadas, Christmas party posadas for the orphans. Um, for seven different orphans here in Guadalajara. Um, we filled up the post, post uh, uh, lot, the whole garden of the post with orphans. And we gave them presents, a meal, and uh, the clothing, gave them clothing, Christmas presents, and a nice meal, and yeah. a lot of uh, toys. Uh, those air brink, uh, yeah, brink trampoline thing, trampoline yeah. kind of things, and uh, they had a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, a special I, day for them. I, I got this, uh, I got this medal from the Legion for raising. Uh, the Legion didn't have any money, and I raised. I wanted to have a party for the orphans. Okay. And that year they didn't have any money. And uh, I raised up $1,500 wow. from my friends and family in the United yeah. States, all sent money. And uh, so we were able to have the. Oh, we are. Um, the Posada are, for are the we, orphans. Yeah, but that's outstanding because uh, we, I'm not sure that we're, we're a nonprofit. Are yes. we a registered nonprofit? Right. Okay. It's, That's yes. for future donation, folks. Uh, you know, when I first heard you mention a while back uh, in reference to the $1,500 raise for those kids, um, I said to myself, for, for uh, many Americans, not all, for many Americans in the States, $1,500 doesn't sound like a large amount. Uh, but $1,500 goes very far here. And it can do a lot of things, and uh, and when we get though when we can get those donations of 10, 15, 20 bucks U.S. dollars, that is, they help out because they they accumulate, they add up, 
and we're able to uh, celebrate things like uh, Thanksgiving and inviting these kids and these needy kids. Uh, so uh, hopefully uh, you can contact us later on about those donations, uh, as small as they are, they add up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And when you had that party, when you had that event, uh, see, I've been to maybe two or three of them. At that time, uh, I joined also. But I, I heard from, I heard about the American Legion here from the American Society uh, of Jalisco. And as soon as I met a couple of veterans, it didn't take me long to join up. I mean, that was the first time I was ever a member of a legion. And we used to have parties and things on Thursdays, anything to uh, to collect funds, dances, that is, rather, to collect funds for the for our charities. Uh, you said you, you brought something that you wanted to read, it's something you wanted yeah, additional uh, information. Just to give some people, give the people a little information about what the American Legion okay. is. Um, the American Legion is a nonprofit organization of U.S. war veterans that was founded in 1919 in Paris, France, by delegates of the American Expeditionary Forces. Uh, it's the nation's largest wartime veteran service organization, and it aims to advocate for patriotism, veterans benefits, national security, and community services. It has state, U.S. territory, and overseas departments, each made up of local posts. It also has subsidiaries, such as the Sons of the American Legion, the American Legion Auxiliary, and the American Legion Riders Motorcycle Group. The American Legion played a leading role in drafting the, and passing the Serviceman's Readjustment Act of 1944. Okay commonly known as the GI Bill. Excellent. Uh, it organizes commemorative events, assists the Department of Veterans Affairs, VA hospitals and clinics and, lob and lobbies on behalf of veterans and service members. Each post tries to keep a service officer on hand okay. to help members navigate the paperwork involved in veterans affairs. VA hospitals and clinics. If you're interested in joining or learning more about the American Legion, you can visit the website at www.legion.org slash forward slash or contact the local post near you or contact post three in Guadalajara by calling me. You can call me at 5233-2815 nine four eight seven let me repeat that five two three three two eight one five nine four eight seven your membership matters we need your help if you were honorably discharged you're eligible for membership with the american legion um, like we said we do a lot of activities we've already mentioned the uh, party with the u.s consulate um, and the Memorial Day. Um, we do fundraisers and picnics and dances. We talked about that to raise money to help the community, uh, help helping the community any way we can. Uh, National will give a lot of stuff about patriotism, but here in Mexico, the posts, uh, uh, it's more about getting along with the community and helping with the community all we can. Um, uh, so we're having a membership drive. Uh, if you were in the United States military during the time of any military action, even if you were not in the midst of the action, you qualify to be a legionnaire. No matter your nationality, uh, if you were a United States, in the United States military and need help with your benefits, or if you're a surviving member of a falling member of the United States military and need help, the American Legion can assist you. <clears throat> the American Legion is a social and mutual aid veterans organization. 
The group has nearly 3 million members in over 14,000 posts worldwide. The Legion is active in organizing commemorative events and volunteer veteran support activities. Its primary activity is lobbying, lobbying on behalf of the interest of veterans and service members, including support for veterans benefits, such as pensions and the veterans affairs hospital system. The American Legion poster in Guadalajara is also active in the Mexican community where people need help. Give me a call again. My number is 5233-2815-9487. Thank you. Thank you for reading that. That's, that's like the bottom line. Uh, our purpose, our reason for gathering every month and, uh, and planning out events <clears throat> and uh, just being part of this community. Uh, we <clears throat> live here. We, but instead of just living here, some of us working here also, or owning <clears throat> businesses, uh, we also like to contribute. We also like to contribute to the community. Um, I remember a project years back that was called The Good Neighbor. And uh, this is something like uh, Clay just mentioned. Uh, to give that American face that a, a lot of residents or uh, nationals here don't really see, not the stereotyping that you see on TV and in the movies. Um, we know that uh, those charities are important because they benefit from, from that type of, from your generosity when you contribute to our organizations. We meet once a month, and we have a, our issue now is that we don't have a, a permanent place. And we sometimes we move around like nomads uh, looking for someone to either allow us to meet at their home or a restaurant that would, would not mind uh, allowing us a corner of their establishment where we have a meeting once a month. Uh, we're looking for uh, a permanent spot, and hopefully the message gets out there uh, to you that are listening today, that we're in, we're in search of a permanent place to meet. Um, uh, we we want to plan future events and we want to be part of the community, but uh, what's the, the difficult part is not being stable, stationary in a in a place where we can keep our records and we can have people call in and contact us immediately and personally. Um. Yeah, <clears throat> this next month, the uh, first Tuesday of uh, August, right? Okay. First Tuesday of August, this next month, we're meeting at my house in Las Fuentes. Um, I have uh, uh, plenty of uh, room, uh, plan on setting up tables in my garage. But we have a big garden. There's plenty of room in the garden also to set up uh, meetings. We often have parties around the pool. Uh, it's a coto that I live in. Uh, the pool is uh, for the people that live there in the, in the coto and, uh, and the gated community. So... Uh, uh, what time that would, would st that would be uh, August 1st, Tuesday, August 1st? At uh, what time? The second Tuesday. Right. The second Tuesday. Oh, I'm sorry. That would be the 8th. Yeah. Second okay. Tuesday of August. Um, at uh, 1.30, 1, 2? At 1 o'clock. Okay. I believe it's at 1 o'clock. Excellent. Um, we're looking around. I've been looking around. I've found a couple of different places. Uh, a, a bar. A bar, but it's kind of far away. I found a bar out in St. Augustine that would be perfect for us, but it's a little, a little bit far for everybody to yeah. travel to. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, we, we want. Um, I've, I've been here since 1998, and I'm pretty much Mexican now. And uh, uh, out in St. Augustine, it's Rio, Mexico. Yeah. And. Uh, if we if we were met, met in that bar, we get to know Rio, Mexico. Wow, that's excellent. <laughs> and uh, but we need to hire a bus to right. take over. <laughs> well, it's, 
It's uh, if there's no traffic, it's only about 25 minutes from Las Fuentes. So. Oh, okay, still, Las Fuentes is about 35, 40 minutes from my home to Las yeah. Fuentes. So, so some of us live in the in the outskirts of Guadalajara. Yeah. But uh, that, that's where we're at right now. We had a beautiful property, but the membership started falling out. At one time, Post 3 had 465 members wow. of the World War II and Korean and uh, Vietnam. And some Vietnam members were beginning to come in. Um, but it was mostly World War II and Korean. And, um, and we had we had a beautiful building, a beautiful dance hall, a bar. But the membership started falling off and uh, expenses uh, uh, got bad and some of the members decided they wanted to sell. We fought real hard to keep it, but um, we go by vote. Uh, right. and, and we were outvoted and they ended up Democratically. Democratically. Then they ended up selling the property. And uh, so that was a dirty shame because we could really use that property now. Yeah. No, I remember the place being so large. It, it um, easily accommodated, and I'm talking about the parking, over over 20 cars. Yeah. Uh, additionally, the grounds themselves, you can raise a couple of tents. That's how large the grounds were. The facility for the bar and dancing, uh, the area that it was it was humongous. Uh, but what what I miss more than than other things, uh, I, I miss because we had contact with just about every every organization in that area and here in Guadalajara that wanted to meet uh, uh, and, and and meet us and practice their English. And uh, we had the, uh, the the events like I remember uh, one particular Fourth uh, of July. God, we had about three hundred people in the yard, mm -hmm. and they were they weren't just Mexicans and Americans. They were like anyone that heard about it was there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, I want to touch very lightly on a, on something that's very uh, special to us as legionnaires about those veterans uh, that uh, that are deported from the United States. We had a visitor, Tran, Dan, uh -huh. if I'm not mistaken. And I know you know her. Yes. And uh, can you say a little bit about her program, if you don't mind? Yes, yeah, she's uh, she's supporting, she's raising money and su supporting uh, veterans uh, that were deported from the United States. She's been able to, uh, to get a few, uh, get them, get their green cards, and get them uh, reinstated into the United States. Uh, they they hadn't seen their family in a long time, but um, yes, there is a, a group here that we can put you in contact with uh, of veterans that have been de been deported from the United States for whatever reason, um, and uh, she's a lawyer and she works very hard yeah. and. Um, um, and she's very dedicated to helping the people. As a matter of fact, this morning, she was at the uh, American Society. Uh, she had a she was going to do a presentation at ten thirty in the morning. I couldn't make it because then I had to then return home, then come here. It was too much for me. Uh, but uh, we she's going to be on here uh, in 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 the future in the future uh, dates. Uh, she's already committed herself. To explain explaining that whole program that she's affiliated with, um, we're also working on. This is something that will be very beneficial to the veterans, and I'm sure you know about it. Of course, about having um, with Juan Castro on having a, um, uh, a a facility, a hospital here, take care of our veterans, whereby instead of having to fly to the states. They can take care of the medical problems here. I know that uh, the veterans of uh, Puerto Vallarta, uh, they do have several programs, actually. They're very well organized. And uh, Jesse, the uh, commander, 
He's been very active. He's also trying to help us out also into having a contact here in Guadalajara where you don't have to go to Puerto Vallarta. And um, so that that's in the works. And I'm going to have someone speak on that in the future, a gentleman by the name of uh, Ernesto Bliss. He's in Panama. He has an organization that helps veterans overseas, and that's where we are. So uh, so that, that's the future. Um, we have um, – we're also, we get invited to anything that uh, Chapala does, which is very good because uh, those that go, sometimes I, I get to attend. Uh, we can intermingle with other legions. I think they have seven over there, post seven and post, there's a three over there also perhaps. Post, I know there's two of them. Post 12, post seven and it's, post 12. Okay, because they, okay, that's uh, Ahihik, right, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, Ahihik, correct. Yeah, Chapala and Ahihik. So what we're saying is they're veterans out here. Some of them live in our community. So And we only uh, ask to contact us so that our numbers can increase so we'll be more effective. We, we understand that not everyone uh, perhaps can make the meetings, but we're going to make it so that when we do find a place, we'll be able to meet and have uh, 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 discussions and plans of not only the events, but the programs that the veterans uh, offer. When you were here at the um, at the Las Fuentes, were you did you have a post? I mean, were you a, uh, a vice commander or service officer, or, or did you have a command? Did you have certain responsibilities at the other legion number three? Um, we had a service officer. Were you also? I see first commander. Is that what it says? No. Oh, past, past commander. Past commander. Okay. Past commander. Yeah, we had a, a very good service officer. Um, usually it's someone who's who's worked through the worked through the paperwork for himself. The red tape also. For himself and 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 knows how to do nah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's not easy. Um, but there's a there's a school you can take online from national. Okay. A class you can take online from National. I didn't know it that. It teaches you how to be a good service officer. Okay. You can take that class online um, to learn how to uh, uh, make your way through all the paperwork. It's a lot. The different kinds of forms, the form numbers, and the kind of forms you have to fill out and so forth. Um, it seems like it's complicated. So... Um, uh, I'm st I'm still using Medicare, but uh, and I fly I drive to the border once in a while if I need medical work. A lot, and a lot of vets are driving to the border to use their VA. Right. And um, it seems like uh, I've I've heard that they already have a couple of places here in Guadalajara that will accept. VA car claim, okay, and 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 build VA for it. That, that that they've already got a couple of places set up for that. Um, uh, uh, post um, the post in Puerto Vallarta had had said that there was a couple of places here that they send it to if they can't be taken care of there in Puerto Vallarta. Okay. So there may already be a couple of places. Okay. And and I'm sure I think there is a doctor and a hospital in in Chapala that it will accept um VA card. Okay, claims and, and bill oh and bill VA for it. That's excellent. Uh if it's if it's not already set up, it's well on the way. Okay. Um, oh yeah, we we um that, that's part of the, that's part of the um, discussions that we have. How to organize to get that uh, flowing smoothly. Uh, I, the service officer also helps out the veteran widows because uh, they have a lot of a lot of questions when the veteran passes away. And one of the things that I was uh, familiar with was when I was a member in Mexico City was helping out or, or at least having the contact with the American embassy. Here will be the American consulate with the Department of uh, Social Services when it comes to their Social Security benefits. 
a lot of these things the services officer, the service officer rather, uh, has to know in order to to uh, convey that information to the uh, to the widow. In addition to other benefits, not only Social Security, better the benefits. So uh, that's why we know and uh, that it's essential to have uh, this organization functioning and 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 up and going so that uh, we can assist those. Uh, and I keep on repeating it. I don't get tired. If you're out there and you have any information that will help us, if you have any information as to where we can meet a general location, it doesn't necessarily have to be at the Centro of Guadalajara, but it would be, I guess it would be comfortable for everyone. I'm not even sure about that, but mm -hmm. since it's centrally located, I reckon it would. Uh, or a place where we can meet uh, and if we have to pay, remember that even though we pay dues, we don't get, we get what, $10 from every membership too? Yeah. Not really a lot of money. Post. And if we have 20 people, not really a lot of bread to pay for the functions. But anyway, uh, if we have to pay for, for us to be uh, utilizing a space to understand that we don't have the funds right, right now. We, we do have... <clears throat> In post three now, we do have a a good uh, service officer now. Okay. Um, he's 100% disabled and has worked through all that on his own. Is Warren? Warren. Yeah. Warren. Yeah. Warren. Uh, he's, in the, he's in the States right now, but when he's here, he's able to help with. Okay. He was the one that got me in contact with the veterans that were deported because he was working on that with Tran. Right. About helping the, and these veterans that are deported, uh, the the infractions, the violations they committed, they're not they're not uh, overwhelmingly uh, 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 really ugly ugly uh, violations. They could be simplistic. I mean, it could be like a traffic violation. I'm not saying that a, a DUI doesn't merit being called a serious infraction. But I'm saying sometimes the circumstance calls for a more lenient um, uh, punishment. And the, if I'm not mistaken, the the immigration service has a, a, a what do you call that? Like a, a no nonsense, or I forgot the name of exactly the term, uh, where uh, any little any little error you commit, and and you're not an American citizen. You already be uh, uh, listed for for deportation, mm -hmm. regardless of how small is the uh, the infraction. So some of them return, some of them are able to return, but that that's a fight that's that's currently being played now, even in uh, with some of our uh, representatives in the United States, and uh, it's going to take a little while, but it's getting there. And, and some have successfully been reunited with their families, people that have served. Uh, their careers in the armed forces and perhaps committed an offense that you wouldn't call it big, but in any offense, uh, no tolerance. I'm sorry, that's that's the phrase. Uh, no, no tolerance. Uh, so any little thing you commit, you're already part of that program to be deported to the United States, from the United States. Um, and our meetings, um, usually we get about eight people right now. Yeah, we've we've got ten about ten members right now, but uh, not everybody's able to come every every meeting. So, uh, so sometimes it's only been four of us. Okay, and you don't members. necessarily need um, to uh, to be a member of Post Three. You don't necessarily need to live here. In other words, you can register as a member, and we have some Americans that return to the states. Sometimes for three months, six months, then they return, they come back. So you can still maintain your membership, which number-wise, it looks good for us, but it also helps us out when they pay their their dues or when they themselves uh, give from their pockets in order for us to uh, to carry on. Right. Um, what charities... Um, do you know any of the charities or the names of any of the charities that uh, right now uh, we are looking for to sponsor? 
I, I know that the uh, Salvation Army has a place for kids that are orphans, but I mean they 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 have their own organization, very well funded. Yeah. But uh, there are some there are some houses here. So I remember in Mexico we had a blind girl school, we had the uh, abandoned children's school, and some other group, the third group, and they we even they helped donated. out. We even helped out American Society. They were in, they were in a, a their membership have gotten down really low, and their, their expense they have regular expenses, and we even helped them out before. Yeah. Um, so you know, one hand washes the other. Uh, we have a pretty large uh, expat community here in Guadalajara, and I'm a bit surprised that veterans that are, that we know that are that have that have become um, contacts, members, messages of uh, with the on Facebook. I'm surprised that they uh, don't contact us. Perhaps they're working. I mean, I'm sure they are. But it doesn't mean that, you know, you can still let us know that you're out there. Uh, we, we need the support. We wouldn't be asking uh, if, if, we can, if we could have managed. And even if we managed, the, 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 the voice would be out there. The uh, news would be out there that we would like more participation of veterans. This is an organization that's very honorable. It's an organization that since 1919 has existed. As a matter of fact, one of the guys who had his hands in on establishing founding uh, is uh, Teddy Roosevelt Jr., although he, want, he did not want to be the national commander. But he understood the necessity of those that fought in our, in our, in our wars. When they returned, someone had to deal with the, the trauma with the families, with the benefits, someone had to take part of that uh, uh, the red tape of bureaucracy. So this is how the American Legion helps out, and this is stateside. Imagine overseas; it's even more difficult. Sometimes the uh, language barrier makes it complicated for families that are related and uh, our spouses, especially of veterans, it makes it difficult for them to reach out to anyone for help. Uh, perhaps by contacting the uh, American consulate, but they surely would refer you to the American embassy, to the uh, American Legion, and that's definite. So yeah, we, we're here with a mission, and we're here to, to let you know that we exist and that we need your support. Uh, something you want to add about the American the Legion helped me out a lot when I first came in. Okay. Uh, that, that was my first contact with American Legion. And uh, right away, somebody helped me find a, a room. <laughs> I, I, all I needed was a room. I was traveling solo. And uh, so he took me took I'll me to someone's house who, who furnished meals and rented rooms in her house. Excellent. And... Uh, so I, I started from there. Uh, American Legion Post 3 was very well known. It was very well known at the time, uh, all over Guadalajara. You can still ask most anybody. Uh, and they went to the dance. They yeah. used to go to the dance. Every they Thursday, say, oh, yeah, Thursday I night. I remember the Legion. I used to go to the dances. We also gave... Um, free English classes. We had free English classes. I helped with the free English classes. Uh, we had several people volunteer their time to help uh, English classes. I met my wife in the, in the English class. Cool. And um, so uh, helping her learn English. So, but the American Legion was very well known. We, uh, we had uh, as many as 400 people sometimes at the dance on Thursday night. That Thursday night dance was the place to go. Exactly. Uh, it was. We had Thursday night tied up. We knew with Friday night we'd have a lot of competition on <laughs> Saturday, so we decided on Thursday. And uh, Thursday I know. night, American I know. Legion was the place to go. 
Yeah, I uh, I was here. I I arrived in 2007, and I left on the ninth to Mexico City. But uh, for a year that I was here, while I was a member of the Post Three, um, I uh, I acquired the uh, licenses for having that dance. We had to pay the ayuntamiento uh, once a week, and they will grant you uh, a license for dancing and for selling of uh, liquor, alcohol, and beverages. And it was a weekly operation. I, of course, I, I would prefer if it once a month I went and paid, you know, made four payments, but they they did it on a weekly basis. So yeah, I, I, I remember how how crowded it was. It was really crowded. And we always had either, I think we had a father and son uh, group, if you can call it, team that had the organ and he played like every music imaginable mm -hmm. and the place was jumping. Los so, Pinos. Oh, yeah. That's, Los Pinos. <laughs> I remember that, that uh, yeah, exciting. Like music. It was exciting. And, uh, and like I said, it affected the whole community because, uh, you know, when you have over 100 people in one place, you have that much space and they're dancing. And yeah, they can buy our beer and refreshments and whatever we were selling to eat. They also visited the local bodeguitas, the uh, abarrotes, or the bars after we closed that they continue on with their party. So yeah, we affected the community in a positive way. Um, and we would like, you know, I'm not saying those glory days to return, but it would be nice to be established firmly so that our voices can be heard and people can see what we're about and how we can, uh, as 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 friends of this community, how we can affect them. One of the things that I really, uh, I really uh, am enthusiastic about is that when we have our finally have a place to have an area designated for those wanting to speak English, because gee, every one of us practically was born in the states, mm -hmm. and from wherever we came back, whichever state we we were born in. We all speak the language, so uh, that has helped out a lot of people. I know that in Mexico City, it, it was a big, it was very big for the place to be filled, and of course they they helped in in eating and drinking in the in the in our place, mm -hmm. in, at our post. But uh, more than anything else, it was like free English classes, and you know they have places here where people meet for coffee, and they have these conversations. They call them group meetings, expats in the local community. And they benefit a lot. At a setting, something that we can have where we can operate at minimum three days a week, we will also benefit from that crowd, from those people. And plus, we, you guys don't understand. Veterans have a lot of war stories, and we can share them with you. <laughs> and believe me, we're not, we won't bore you, man, <laughs> because... Some of them are unbelievable, but they they they're there. And uh, if you want to listen to them, you know, um, we would like to uh, let me thank again uh, those that are watching um, and those that communicate with us. I already got a, a couple of messages today, and let me just let you guys know um, from Juan Mar Juan Marquez. He says hello, and also from Isabel Rojas from Ciudad Juarez. She says hello to the programs. Any of those I want to send your remarks, we thank you. Um, and let me give you uh, Clay's number again. That's 5233-2815-9487. And mine is 5233 You guys can contact us. If you go on on uh, WhatsApp, it'll be easier to communicate and to uh, send our messages. Um, we um, we last met. The last meeting we had was at Juan's house, right? Juan Castro. Uh, no. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. At the restaurant. At the restaurant. He, yeah. He, uh, uh, the, the issue there was a little bit far for some of us, maybe, or it, it was in a restaurant that was. Um, I mean, they gave us the second floor. Yeah, they gave us the second floor. But um, it was still loud, right? They had music yeah, and... Well, it wasn't so bad on, on a Tuesday during the day. Oh, huh. it's, it's not real bad, but they, 
Um, it, it was. I, I didn't it wasn't the ideal. It, I didn't notice it disturbing, disturbing right. us. Um, uh, but um, it'd probably be a good place to to continue. But it wasn't ideal. Right, right. It, it's good for meetings. It's good for getting out there the uh, the things that we want to do. But by having a permanent place, we can put our files. We can have our our all the equipment that we need to manage this organization here. We get a lot of help. Uh, I get a lot of tips from either Randall in, um, in Chapala, very instrumental in helping us out here. He's the commander of Chapala. And then also from Jesse uh, in uh, Puerto Vallarta. And I'd like to thank them personally because they're always asking, how are you guys doing? Anything new? How can we help? And um, which is which gives us the confidence that if we continue, we can eventually we can have our own place where we can be just like them. And uh, they're, they're available to us actually for anything we need. But we, I mean, we first have to have a spot, and and we need to at least uh, have a membership drive. I don't know if we have to rent some place for a membership drive. But um, it would be nice if somehow, if we can, at the American Society, just have a, a, a day that they can allow us where we can, not to meet, but to invite people to become members. And a lot of people know about the American Society. They're not necessarily all members of the American Society, but it's, it's an ideal place. It's in, it's in Chapalita. And uh, maybe uh, I think I'm going to get on that. I just That idea that I just spoke about. Yeah, we we talked about that last meeting, a uh, meeting at American Society, uh, but it was brought up that there's no parking. Is uh, it's, oh, Ed got his car towed, and he's oh, really boy. he's really against going over there. I don't blame him. But yeah. it is um, Juan and I. Uh, it is a good place. Um, they have plenty of room desks, and on on a Tuesday. In the middle of the day, they, I don't think they have anybody else there. I'm not I'm not sure of their schedule, but um, it probably would be a good place if we could find a public parking nearby that we could go to. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing that I would see is that somehow ourselves and the American Society contacted, like, the local government or the local officials and maybe on that one day when when we can meet, only one day we can meet, we have like a plaque or paper or something that when the police officer sees it, they won't give you a ticket. They won't throw it away because we have the permission. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not easy to do here. I understand that. But yeah. it's just it's only an idea. Uh, maybe even to those guys that, that put the boot on. Uh, on the on the car, maybe if they can contact us to the department. Well, it was the school across the street. There's plenty of parking there. Oh, but it's a school across the yeah, street, have, maybe, and if you park there, of course, they'll call the of course they'll call the police. Then we have to speak to the school. Yeah, somehow, um, and and I'm willing to be part of that committee that speaks to the school. You know, it's something that uh, if if we need to do it just once, just to we can bring. A so we have to bring that up in a meeting. Yeah, that would that would be a great, great was, idea. There was a couple that we got outvoted last time about going to American Society. So I voted we, by we our members. An extra, we need an extra vote in order to All right. get it get it changed to going there. Well, we have to bring it up again. I mean, like Congress, how many times yeah. don't they bring up well, well, amendments? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> we can bring it up again. Uh, One was for. It, uh, I wasn't for or against any place, okay. but I went with Juan. Uh, but uh, Ed and um, uh, Charlie Charlie Slay outvoted us. <laughs> well, those are the two that should go to the school and speak to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm sure they could convince them. Um, anyway, but yeah, but I'm willing to be part of that committee if that's what's needed to speak to the school. We just got we got to do things like well, we have Belay. I mean, we were against all odds returning to Belen to the cemetery, and we had a, such a great showing. 
we had the uh, the daughter of the American consulate was there. Right. Uh, the the Marines were there with their color guard. Right. We had uh, um, Jalisco's um, important Jalisco officials attending. And we, we can do that. I'm sure we can almost beg the school to allow us one day to have four cars. Right. I mean, we're not even asking for 20 cars. You know, if we have to carpool or take a Uber or whatever, but at least give us three spots, three, four spots. Right. So, you know, and I understand that, you know. Uh, but yeah, I, I, and I think we, we can do it if we if we approach them. Uh, it just it's just the approach and the manner that you speak to people. Maybe we can get that. Uh, we only got five minutes, uh, and um, I would like to uh, again thank all those that have been watching, those that wrote to me today, um, and others that 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 give us your your comments, and that encourages me because. It allows me to also um, to to continue on the, the, this experiment of mine. Uh, but this Guadalajara community, it's pretty large. And I invite writers, teachers, all types of artists, people that are creative, people that are looking to um, to to have information for the good of the public and the good of our residents here. And I invite you guys to give me a call to appear on the show. Right now, uh, uh, I have a list of those that will attend in the future. But if you contact me, I can send you a calendar and you pick your own Tuesday that you want to appear. Um, Very quickly. Uh, yeah, please. We, we are planning some happy hours at a bar or poker games or cigars and Jack Daniels, not so much to raise money, but to have a little therapy. So that's that good like for nice, some veterans, is, is, to have is, a little is, therapy. Is it like a meeting or just a get, get together? Just to get together. Okay. So yeah, that sounds excellent uh, to have a, a meeting like that. We always meet at... Um, Either someone's home or that that restaurant that we mentioned, Dos, Dos Marias, Dos Marias, they allow us there to uh, to have our meetings, and uh, this is cool too for our for our friends when they want to meet. That the environment is, you can consume, you know, your beverages and you can eat also, and that's what helps out with the community. Uh, I want to thank you again, and I want to wish you all a wonderful week. And um, gracias, Maestro Iskra, por tu uh, por este privilegio de estar aquí en, 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 en el aire y comunicarnos con esta comunidad tan bella. Muchísimas gracias, Maestro.